Hey everyone, Tactics here, and with Shadowlands finally out, I wanted to give you guys a look at 10 of the new mounts that came with it. There are plenty more available, but this video is just to highlight some of the easier ones to get. I'll be putting multiple relevant links and coordinates in the description as well for you guys to check out. I did just want to say a couple things before jumping into the video, so feel free to skip ahead in the timestamps. Just recently I hit 1000 subscribers on my YouTube and I wanted to say a big thank you to everyone who has supported me over the past couple months. It's been an absolutely insane time and I'm really grateful for all the kind words and support you guys have given me. In celebration of reaching 1000 subscribers, I wanted to do a little giveaway for you guys and since this is a mount video, what better way to do that than to give away a couple blizzard mounts. So for two lucky winners, I'll be giving away the blizzard store mount of your choice. It is absolutely free to enter and will be open until December 8th. For those interested, I'll post the gleam.io link in the description to enter. Now with that said, if you enjoyed this video, please make sure you like and subscribe, and let's start off with the Ascended Skymain mount from Bastion. Spread throughout the entire zone, there are five different Vesper Bells that when rung within several minutes of each other will summon the event encounter the Ascended Council on the southern edge of the map. Once a bell is rung, it announces it to the entire zone so you'll know if someone is working on starting this event. I definitely recommend doing this in at least a 5 man group, as then each of you can go to a different bell and ring it to summon the boss, and also because the rares themselves are all level 62 elites, so they are quite difficult to solo. I'll put a link in the description that has the coordinates of all the Vesper locations as well as the event location. Note that this mount is not a 100% drop chance, so it may take a little while to get. From there, we move on to Maldraxxus, where there are some more simple rare mobs that have mount drops, though again, none of these are 100% drop rates. First, there's the Bonehoof Turalis, which drops from the rare spawn to Haunta, who is located in the area just west of the Theater of Pain. This mob is not elite, so it's very easy to solo, and if it's not up when you check, feel free to wait around as the spawn timer appears to be quite low, varying between 10 and 20 minutes. The Blisterback Blood Tusk is another rare spawn drop, coming from Warbringer Malkarok, however he is another 62 elite, and is hidden away in the back of the House of the Chosen, making him a bit difficult to get to. This is another rare you'll want at least a few people for, and I've found that the easiest and fastest way to actually get to him is to have a tank spec player run in front of your group to get aggro on all the elite mobs and just continue running until reaching the boss, as opposed to fighting your way through the hordes of elite mobs. Moving on, we have the Predatory Plague Rock, which is a drop from Geiger, located early on in the House of Constructs. In order to summon this rare, you'll need to be a member of the Necrolord Covenant, though once it's summoned, anyone can get loot from him, so if you aren't a Necrolord, you just need to make a Necrolord friend. In order to actually summon the rare, your Necrolord member will need to have the Anima Conductor unlocked, and it will need to be channeling towards the House of Constructs. Assuming this is true, they can go up to the table that Geiger is located on and pull on the final thread located on his body in order to start the encounter. Like Tahanta, Geiger is a non-elite rare so he is quite easy to solo. Last up in Maldraxxus we have the Hulking Deathrock which drops from the Violet Mistake rare ad that is summoned from the Goo Mixing event near Plague Watch. To summon this specific rare, you'll need to make sure your Mephitic Goo, that's the blue one, is the same as your Viscous Oil, which is the red one, and both are higher than the Missable Ooze, which is the yellow one. This isn't too hard to do, though keep in mind that Goo can be added by anyone nearby, so make sure you let them know the requirements so your Goo ratio doesn't get messed up. I definitely recommend starting with getting the blue goo, as those adds tend to spawn further away from the drop off point, where it's the red goo adds spawn closer to the point and tend to be dumped in more often by other players in the world. Worst case though, you can continue spawning adds here until you get the right one, so if it gets messed up, don't fret. Next up we've got Ardenweald, where there are three guaranteed mounts that are all quite easy to get and should all be obtainable within 30 minutes. To start off, we have the Spine Maw Glade Chewer, which is dropped by Gorm Tamer Tizzo. In order to summon this boss, you'll need to kill Deranged Guardians and their Bristlecone Terror Riders, which are elite mobs located in the open world version of the Tyrannosith Maze. Because of the high density of elite mobs in this area, this is another rare you'll want some friends in order to get. Now every time you kill one of the previously mentioned mobs, there is a chance that they'll summon Chompy, who is a spitting image of the mount itself. 
On Chompy's death, Gorm Tamer Tizzo himself will appear, and once defeated, anyone who helped will obtain their shiny new bug mount. From there we have the Frog Mount in Arboreal Gulper, which is a 100% drop mount coming from Humongous in the Gossamer Cliffs. To summon him, you'll need to have an unusually large mushroom, which is an uncommon world drop for mobs in Ardenweald, including dungeons, so it shouldn't be too hard to get, especially if you were just killing a bunch of mobs for the Spine Maw Glade Chewer. Once you have the mushroom, you only have 20 minutes to bring it up to the top left corner of the zone and interact with the damp loam pile of soil on the ground. This will cause a mushroom to rapidly grow from the pile, eventually turning into the 62 elite mob, so again, you'll want to have a few friends around to help defeat him. Last up, we've got the Wild Seed Cradle, which is probably the easiest of the bunch to obtain. You'll have to collect five different tools, each located in the Garden of Night just southeast of the Root Home Flight Point. These items are a hammer, located inside a cart, a basket found near a fountain, a diary on the elevated platforms, a flute by a group of dancing spriggans, and a wand located under a damaged cart. Once each of these items are located, you can combine them into Twinkle Star's gardening toolkit, which you can then take to Twinkle Star and Tirnaval, who will unveil the Cache of the Moon, allowing you to obtain your cradle and travel in style just like Baby Yoda. Finally, we have Revendreth, who has a couple more 62 Elite Rares without a guaranteed mount drop, so get some friends together and come here daily for your shot at them. To begin, there's the Hope Crusher Gargan, which drops from Hope Crusher up in the Court of Harvesters. To summon him, you'll need to interact with the large prey on the ground, and if it isn't up, don't fret, as the spawn rate isn't longer than 20 minutes, so you can always come back later and check. Once spawned, be aware that this rare hits extremely hard and will also enrage, so you'll want to have either a healer and a tank in your group, or just have great kiting skills. Then there's the Enmire Flyer, which is dropped by Fambu the Infinite, who is located down in the Enmire. You'll have to talk to Seeker Hilda in order to summon him, at which point you'll fight through a couple waves of adds before the boss shows up. Be very careful with the stacking shadow damage taken debuff you get while in this area, as the boss does deal shadow damage which can be quite lethal at higher stacks. You can have one person interact with the nearby torch and stand near your party members in order to remove these stacks, so keep that in mind. But there we have it guys, 10 new Shadowlands mounts that are all fairly easy to obtain, taking minimal time each day to farm and get. If you guys found this video useful, please make sure you like and subscribe for more content like it, it really does help. As a reminder, if you want to enter my 1000 subscriber mount giveaway, you can check out the gleam.io link in the description. In terms of future videos, I'll be putting out quick guides to all the Castle Nathria bosses, similar to my dungeon quick guides that you can find on my channel. On top of this, I'll be putting out more in-depth dungeon guides once Mythic Plus releases, in order to help you guys obtain Keystone Master. I would also love to know if you guys would be interested in Shadowlands Battle Pet content, from World Quest to where to obtain rare drops, so let me know down in the comments. Anyways, that's all for now. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.